Kay McCleary was right. The day they closed the East Dam, the saddest day in American history. <laughs> and if America puts up with this, and if Texas allows this, we're gone. The nation's gone. Texas is gone. The judgment of God must fall on a state wicked enough to abort the hopes of little girls. And 200 of them are gone. And now then they told me I had to take the last five out a while ago. They did tell you that, Brother Roloff? Yes, Rolo? sir. Said they got the, all of them go. And so the, the other five, you can take a picture, and they're packing now. And that sweeps are completely clean. There won't be one girl in this building tonight. Why is that ruling, Brother Roloff? That's what they say the latest rule. In 1976, they changed it. It'll be changed next year. They change them all the time. There's nothing Christian about it. There's nothing American about it. There's nothing scriptural. There's nothing uh, constitutional about it. They're the lawbreakers. <laughs> They've broken every law of dear. What if George Washington were to come back on his old horse, Lexington? What if Paul Revere were to ride through this country tonight? What if Patrick Henry were to come back saying, give me liberty? or give me death, and yet we got death out of it, see? And yet we'd never give in to the humanistic program of the state, infidel uh, to the core. No God, no Christ, no Bible. This is the book. I'm not discouraged, but I'm brokenhearted. Anybody would be. Well, well they said that in, by law you could have five girls, and, and did you realize this was going to happen today? No, I didn't. I thought I thought we could have the five, but... Uh, they they waited to pop that on me till it got in here, and uh, you, you see if there's any tears flowing on their faces. You see, ask them if they prayed last night before coming. How do you feel about having them in your home? Having who? The state workers. That's all right. I'm not mad at them. They're tools of the state. They're the. Uh, they just have to do a job. See, I mean. Uh, I wouldn't do it. Oh, I wouldn't wear their shoes for $10 million a minute. I wouldn't do it. What are you going to do now? Just pray and believe God, and there'll be a better day. There'll be a better day. God didn't lead me to build all these buildings and fly millions of miles day and night and, and not keep on. But, Brother Roloff, didn't they, didn't they say, didn't, weren't we talking about reconstructing your, the structure of your school? Yes, we'll be working on that, but today's the day. This is, I mean, across the street is Memory Gardens. Over here is the Garden of Memories. That's all we've got left today, is remembering the happy boy. Can you imagine this being empty, the dormitory being empty? Millions and millions of dollars that the government didn't put one penny into, not one cent that they put in, into it. The world, the whole world, I hope Mike Wallace will tell us somebody ought to take a stand. I make no apology for the tears. There's no, there's no way not to weep over this. Miss Cameron's almost a dead little lady today. Her husband drove all night. Going into Mississippi, and, and Governor Finch says, welcome to Mississippi, Kentucky. It says, Brother Lord, we make you a Kentucky colonel. Welcome to, and yet how could I take all this property? I'll never leave it. I believe the Lord would have us to use it. Somebody's going to be waked up and realize that they're wrong about it. And that's all I, I know to say. Just ask the people to pray for us, and we're going to continue to trust the Lord and believe that he's going to open the way uh, for us to have the homes again. We met, I guess, all their requirements today. Six long years of battle and um, uh, trying to meet unconstitutional. And there's no way for these homes to be closed under the Constitution, under the Word of God. Our pilgrim forefathers, they came over for just John Bunyan, 12 years in jail over a matter who wouldn't take a license. The only thing that keeps me from being a hero with the bunch that's out here now is that little piece of paper. The legal sign saying this is a state-operated home. We have to do exactly what they say to do. That's the thing. Brother Roth, you say this. Would you consider this a victory by the state? If it is, it's very temporary. There can be no victory in sin and wickedness and wrong. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin's reproach. We're living under a solid reproach today in Texas. 
saddest day in Texas history. What if um, Bowie and Crockett and, and Travis, what if they were to come back and just walk in this learning center, walk through that long the dormitory tonight and try to find one little girl in one of those big empty rooms? The nicest equipment, the nicest facilities in America today, and the largest for people in trouble. The International Year of the Child, International Year of Murder for our children. And that's the story. That's the only way you can put it. Well, this is what we did have left, and uh, this is our last fight. And um, Beth, I'll let you say a word, honey. Where'd you come from? New York City. I grew up over there in the ghettos, and all I learned how to do was fight and take drugs. I never did learn anything in school. I just rebelled against any authority. I hated my parents before I came here, and I ran away a lot of times. And and it was just terrible. I just thought there was nothing to it. I tried to take my life away a lot of times. And when the last time I ran away from home, I went to South Carolina. My mother sent me there to my sister's house because I, I realized I needed help myself. And when I got there, I met this lady, and she told me about these homes. Well, the Rebecca girls, they happened to be over there on tours, and they were giving their testimony, and I was just listening to them, and I was crying my heart out because I just, I just wish I could be like one of them. And then she asked me if I wanted to come here, so I said yes. I came here my own free will. And when I first came here, of course, I didn't hate it because I wasn't safe. I mean, I hated it because I wasn't safe. And um, I just didn't like it at all. But a week after, Brother Rolla was preaching in church, and I gave my life to the Lord. And ever since then, it's been a big change in my life. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. And this, this is my father here. This is my father. And this is my mother here. This is the only parents I ever had in my life. These are the only people that give love to anybody, that are willing to take anybody, no matter how they are. These are the only people that will care for anybody. I love these people, and I love these homes, and I just wish these wet, fair people could just get off our back and leave these homes open. And instead of closing these homes, they ought to make, build more, and, yes. and don't just take a big load out of the cup's back and, uh, and out of people's back. And this is a great man. This is the best man in this whole wine world. And all these people, they just have love. They care for us. They sit with us, and they talk with us, and we have a home that we just have authority. We, we learn how to obey here. We learn how to be a lady. We learn how to just love everybody. Everybody had a, had a, lot, a whole bunch of things that I didn't even imagine of in the world. Amen. I love you, Brother Olaf. I love you, too. Where are y'all going to go? I don't know. I'm just, I want to stay here. My year will be up next month, so I'm staying here as a worker. Yeah. Brother Olaf, where do you think they're going to go? I do not know. But they'll never be turned on the street. That's right. And they'll never go to TYC. That's right. They're not, they're not criminals anymore. That's right. The whole country needs to know that there's going to be a drastic change. I believe God's going to visit judgment on somebody right. within the next 12 months. You wait and see. Do you, think, going to be... do you think Mark White reneged on his agreement with you? I'm not making any comment Did about something that. something happened here that, that you I, weren't counting? I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not going to judge anybody or condemn anybody. I have nothing but love but uh, disappointment in... Uh, uh, losing these five, at least these could kind of keep the dormitory fires burning, you know, and we thought we could keep five. Our lawyers thought we could keep five, but according to some of the late rules and regulations, you see the state is making its bid for all the children. Parents don't own them anymore. The church doesn't own them anymore. They belong. See, that's just like Russia. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, the parents are just incubators to hatch out servants of the state and soldiers of the state. And we're just about a half a step away from being taken over completely. When they get our children and then they get the liberty and freedom of the churches, nobody but a modernistic preacher would accept a license because it's unconstitutional, right. un-American, unscriptural. And you don't find any of the licensed homes taking what we take. That's right. Who'd want this little girl from the ghettos of New York? Who'd want these that had been murderers? Nobody. Okay, even if it means never having any girls in this home again, will you not take a license? You're asking a silly question That's and right. wasting your breath and my time. Yeah. I don't understand. This is supposed to be the year the children leave. Yeah. They want to stay here. They have to leave. Yeah. They let us do anything. Why can't they let us stay here if we want to? 
They let us stay on the streets. They let us do our... Oh, sure. Uh, house, house and they could all run the streets yeah. right now. Yeah, let them to let us stay here on all free will. They, they can choose any home they want except this one. Yeah. Uh, the stay homes, they don't get help. I know they don't. You know what? You know what? A cop told my mother in New York, my sister, she wants to... My mother wanted to put her in a stay home. And you know what they told her? My personally, that they that she put that if they were if they were her, they wouldn't put her, they would just leave her on the streets. That's how, that's how bad the stay homes are. Yeah. And I seen friends of mine, a whole bunch of friends that they go to stay home. And you know what? They come out they come out seven times worse. Yeah. That's why they give. They don't have no discipline over there. Girls wearing blue jeans and smoking and everything. That's nothing. That's not worth it. Yeah. That's not, this is the only home that's the yeah. end for any teenager, for anybody that needs help. They get them here. We do get them. Yeah. This is, man, these people, they're going crazy. Have you got faith enough to believe that these homes will continue? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I do with all my heart. Amen. Yes. All is quiet. The hallways no longer ring with laughter. Rooms are empty. No one's precious daughter sleeps in any bed. No praying and testimonies in the big living room. All is quiet at Rebecca and at the anchor home in Zapata. We desire your prayerful support as we still operate our two lighthouse homes for men and boys, the city of refuge for alcoholics and drug addicts, the helpers home for older girls and women, all located in Corpus Christi, our Bethesda home for girls at Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and the beautiful, peaceful Valley home for senior Christians and missionaries in the Rio Grande Valley. These are your ministries. Pray for them daily and support them as the Lord may lead. I'm glad the Lord gave me two wonderful promises in these dark times when he said, I'm going to turn this curse into a blessing, and I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Also, the children which thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the other, shall say again in thine ears, The place is too straight for me. Give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, who hath begotten me thee, seeing I've lost my children. And I'm glad to take my stand with the mighty Christian patriot Patrick Henry, who three days after he saw a preacher beaten and he died because he would not take a license, said with great compassion and tears, Is life so dear, or peace so sweet, as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery, forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. I'm glad that the God on the mountain is also the God in my valley. God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, you make them right. Brother Roloff is still broadcasting daily on the Family Altar program, heard on more than 170 radio stations. You may write him at Box 1177, Corpus Christi, Texas. Though Rebecca and the Anchor Home have been closed, we're expecting these homes to reopen soon under the new reorganization plan. Again, we desire your prayer.